Hello guys, it is Spooky Noodles here, and I am here to give you an update with my coming of age TBR. Now I'm switching off between Richard Lehman TBRs and, uh, not TBRs, uh, my Richard Lehman TBR and my uh, coming of age TBR. And what that means is, well if anyone doesn't know what TBR means, that means to be read. Um, I got two lists going and I'm muscling through each list and uh, what I'm doing is a coming of age TBR alongside the Richard Lehman TBR. Richard Lehman TBR is pretty, you know, it explains itself. It's, uh, I read a lot of Richard Lehman books. But, uh, which I will actually give an honorable mention right now, is this, well, not really honorable since I'm not really enjoying it, but, uh, I'm currently reading this book, Richard Lehman's Bite. Um, as you can see, I'm halfway through it, maybe a little bit more than halfway, and it's a drag. It's a really big drag. It's kind of a uh, kind of disappointing, to be honest. But it's a good premise. But I don't think you need to talk about a freaking cracker and some cheese for two pages. Ugh. <laughs> I'm just kidding though. But uh, this is gonna be. My, I'm gonna display with you the coming of age stories I've either started or not started, but uh, am contemplating and reading. So this is a no order. I well, I don't know. So this is a book I have heard great things about. I uh, want to give it a read as soon as possible, and that is Dean Koontz's or Dean R. Koontz, The Voice of the Night. So this book, excuse me, I'm a little tired here. This is a coming of age novel, obviously. And let me read it back for you. No one could understand why Colin and Roy were best friends. Colin was a so shy. Roy was so popular. Colin was nervous around girls. Roy was a ladies' man. Colin was fascinated by Roy. And Roy was fascinated by death. Then one day, Roy asked his timid friend, You ever kill anything? And from that moment on, the two were born, bound together, not born together, <laughs> bound together in a game too terrifying to imagine and too irresistible to stop. And it's got some blurbs from some magazines all over this, you know. But um, I'm definitely want to give this a read. I don't know when I'm going to read it. Um, I don't even know if I'm gonna read it. I might even listen to it. I haven't I found the audiobook on audible So I might give it a listen. I have one credit right now One credit to my name and I have this one and a few others. I'm contemplating or considering as my next read <sighs> I'm so sorry guys Um, but this one was was excellent just this art, nah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of boys' life. Uh, this one will be excellent. I know it because everyone talks highly for about it. And, you know, uh, Paperback Mania, I think it was, said good things about this book. Um, my buddy Edward Lorne has said good things about this book. So um, everyone at Books of Horror loved this book. So I think this might be my next read or listen. And yeah, and you know, I should probably tell you what I'm listening to currently. What I'm listening to currently is uh, um, Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. I don't actually own the physical copy yet, um, but I, uh, I'm in an auction for it, so I'm hoping I win it for cheap. But uh, so, um, what I've read so far. I really should have started this video off with telling you what I've read so far. So I've read Boy's Life 
or not in this order. Uh, actually, I'll do it in order. I read Tr The Traveling Vampire Show by Richard Lehman. So that was my first coming of age novel. Then I read Boy's Life by Robert R. McCammon. Now I'm on Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. And then next could possibly be Dean R. Koontz's The Voice of the Night. Then you have Douglas Clegg's Neverland. I hear nothing about this book, actually. Um, this book is kind of beat up. It's seen better days for sure. But, uh, it's a reading copy. And then it was meant to be read. So, and actually, I think I destroyed it. You can see there's like a little bend here. I think I did that with putting it in my backpack. So I think that was my bad. And you can see it's like a someone clipped the uh, ear of the cover or whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, let me tell you what this book's about. High on a bluff, looking out on the ocean is an ancient shack, a secret place called Neverland. Here in Gull Island, a misbegotten spit of Georgia coast, Young Bew Jackson joins his cousin Sumter in strange sinister games, rituals that grow into a sickening explosion of pure evil. Soon a tide of blood fury will rise, swamping the island in a raging, all-engulfing sea of merciless terror. So that doesn't really tell much about the book, <laughs> honestly. Um, but... Sorry, I was reading the inside slip. This might be the next audiobook for sure. Like, the audiobook sounds good, I think. I, I didn't, I can't remember, recall if it was this one that sounded good or Shadowland that sounded good. But, eh. but yeah. You got Neverland by Douglas Clegg. I might have said something else earlier. I'm, I apologize. It's De Douglas Clegg for sure. You can see it right on the cover there. If I can. Douglas Clegg. I mean, I could be saying his name wrong. It could be Clegg. But I like Clegg better. So that's what I rolled with. Um, Next, we have Straight On Till Morning by Christopher Golden. I don't know when I'm going to give this read, but it's set in the 80s, as it says right here. It is the summer of 1981, the last three months of freedom for Kevin Murphy and his friends before they begin high school. The last chance to hang at the mall and goof off. And Kevin's last chance to confess his unrequited love for Nicole French. But Nikki has a new boyfriend, a tough 18-year-old named Pete Starling. Kevin knows Pete's no good for Nikki. And now Pete and his gang have taken Nikki away to rescue her. Kevin and his friends must follow them to into a land they were never meant to know about. A life can they cannot imagine. A place from which they may never return. And hailed by Peter Straub as wildly in, 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 inventive. Blah, 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 blah. So... They're straight on till morning by Christopher Golden. And I don't know how I found this book. I was like doing my research, trying to find some good uh, coming of age horrors. And even though this isn't a horror novel, it's a coming of age story. And uh, why is my phone going off? You may ask. Oh, it's 12 o'clock. That's why I gotta go soon. All right, well, let's go quickly with the next two. Um, I love this cover. I don't know why, but next one is Peter Straub's Shadowland. Now, I believe this is a coming of age novel. From what it sounded like, it's about two kids and a magician. So let me read the back for you. Come back to a dark, come back. 
to a dark house deep in Vermont woods, where two friends are spending a season of horror apprenticed by a master magician, learning secrets best left unlearned, entering a world of incalculable evil, more ancient than death itself, more terrifying, when more real. Only one of them will make it through. And this is a little blurb from Stephen King saying, I thought it was creepy from page one. I loved it. Now, for one thing I've learned about Stephen King's little blurbs is that you can't trust Stephen King blurbs. Other authors you can trust, but Stephen King sent, tends to give his word out to a lot of authors, you know, and I've read a book that he praised once and I couldn't get through it. So, all right, and now we got Mongrels by Stephen Graham Jones. I believe this is a coming of age werewolf novel, which is very exciting. Um, you have blurbs here from a couple of authors, one being Josh Mallerman, uh, who wrote Bird Box. He said, you know how you once wished you were a werewolf? How you stood in front of the mirror and wanted to see a transformation? Mongrels takes, it by, takes you by the hand, guides you down the road, finally to that change. Stephen Graham Jones is a powerful a as the monster's heroine. So this one is, ooh, you're in for a read. He was born an outsider, like the rest of his family, poor yet resilient. He lives in the shadows with his Aunt Libby and Uncle Darren, folk who stubbornly make their way in a society that does not understand or want them. They are mongrels, mixed blood, neither this nor that. The boy at the center of the mongrels must decide if he belongs to the road with his aunt and uncle, or if he fits with people on the other side of the tracks. Um, that's all I'm going to read for you. There's more, but that book seems very interesting. So, now this is a book I actually started and decided to put down for a while. That's Abomination by Michael C. Norton. It's not much of a coming of age novel, but I mean, I made it 114 pages in before I had to put it down. All that old book smell, I love it. But I found it entertaining for a while there and it seemed like a good coming of age novel a weird scene with uh his brother and mother when uh he was masturbating but let's just overlook that <laughs> but yeah this is uh the other one uh, i just wanted to mention it real quick because uh i started reading it and put it down but it was part of my coming of age uh novels that I was reading and then last but not least I do not have the book you know as you see it's not in my hands it's coming in the mail actually the, it's two books that are coming in the mail and one is called Ghoul by Brian Keene and the other one is called uh, Fear by Ronald Ke Kelly so those two books I actually those are might be the most read soon you know, as soon as I get here, they, I should be hopefully done with Bite around, you know, next week. So, hopefully I can finish Bite and move on to either Ghoul by Brian Keene or to uh, Fear by Ronald Kelly. Or one of these fabulous books I have here, if I can put them up like cards. actually might make a good uh, title right there but yeah that's my coming of age uh, TBR oh whoops I hope you enjoyed that's an update actually um, and I hope you have a wonderful day it's spooky noodles and yeah all right bye guys